Right, I'm just on my way down to my pals. Right, I want to talk about, I don't know what I'm going to call this video. Uh, it's not going to be about Eddie Earn or Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury. They're not going to be in this video. You know, there's going to be no music from anybody like that or Lady Gaga or any of them like that. They're not going to be in this video or whether that song were earlier on at petrol station. We're just going to talk about fighters who, when they were, when this turned pro, when they turned over, these fighters, I've made a little list up, these fighters, when they turned pro, you'd watch them and you say they're going to go all the way. Now, number 10, Scotty Cardle. Now, there were a lot of hype, there were a lot of hype around Scotty Cardle, and I think where I can go with this now. There was a lot of hype. There was a lot of hype around Scotty Cardle, and he won a British title and fizzled away. Robbie Barrett beat him up on a Steffi Bulls fighters. I think that's Steffi Bulls only winning it on a Sky Show. I don't know, is it? It was thrown on the bus, but Robbie Barrett turned it around and he won a British title, so good luck to him. Uh, good luck to Robbie Barrett. He'll always have that on his CV, British champion. But uh, Scott Cardle, he's one, or you would have said, would go all the way. Uh, oh, I thought it'd go all the way because uh, he went GB squad, one GB squad, and blah de blah, and it just hasn't worked out for him, has it? It just hasn't worked out for him, and I feel for him. So, Scotty Cardle, he's in my list. I think we'll call this video Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda. Uh, could have been a runner bean, no that's a bit harsh, but could have gone on to better things but didn't. Uh, or shoulda, can't say woulda, but we're going to call this video coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's not a slight on any of the fighters because there's a lot of things that go on behind the background that people don't understand. Do you know what I mean? People don't understand what goes on. And Scott, Scott Cardle, Scotty Cardle should have gone a lot further than that. Whether they can come back from it now, I don't know. It's going to take somebody, some great matchmaking to, to get him back, to get Scott Cardle in mix. It's going to, be, going to have to be really good matchmaking, but... So, Scotty Cardle at number 10. Uh, Matthew Macklin. Matthew Macklin didn't win a world title. He lost in a in a in a British title fight against Jamie Moore, in a barnstormer. But he didn't win a world title, and his talent—I mean, he was with Dennis, fighting on Dennis Hobson's show was early on in his career. Matthew Macklin, massive, massive, massive things were planned for Matthew Macklin, and it just didn't happen. And I kind of feel short-changed. I kind of feel short-changed about that actually. I feel short change about Macklin's career. You know, he, he won everything except the world title. What he robbed against Sturm, you could have get it Sturm, you could have get it Macklin, could have gone either way. Thought it were a draw to be honest, but you need that, you need a knockout in Germany, don't you? Look what happened to Robin Reed. He got robbed on scorecards, he dropped the guy, and they turned it into a foul. The 10-8 round went to other guy. That and that made difference, didn't it, on scorecards, so you know what I mean? But uh, that's my opinion. So but we we'll just pull up here. So Matthew Macklin. Matthew Macklin should have won a world title. Matthew Macklin, yep. Yeah. Uh, Mark Morrison, is it Mark Morrison or Marcus Mark? Marcus Morrison. Marcus Morrison, what's he ended up doing? He had the look, he had everything that Matchroom looked for in a fighter. But, when it come down to it, 
he was just basically an athlete, wasn't he? He was one of them athlete type guys, caught, be, caught up between being a footballer and a boxer, kind of an in-betweener. And I think that that was his downfall. I, I don't think he knew whether he was a boxer or a footballer. And Joe Gallagher hung him out to dry in a few of them fights we were getting beat. Should have had, should have had it, uh, rug pulled from underneath him. Should have pulled him out in some of them fights. It, where is he going now, Marcus Morrison? Sky don't have him on no more, do they? On Matchroom. Big things were planned for him. He, he, he was spoke about as next big thing, wasn't he? But... It's one of them things, in it? But... Marcus Morrison. Paul Smith. Massive things were said about Paul Smith. Massive, massive things. Uh, Paul Smith was spoke about. Paul Smith was spoke about as being ne next big thing because he was a decorated amateur. He fought Pascal for a gold medal, didn't he, in Commonwealth Games 2002. And people were saying Paul Smith were going to go all the way. And he was in good shape, Paul Smith, when he turned pro as a middleweight. And I personally think that. I were not a fanboy, but I was some kind of Paul Smith fan when he turned pro. And I think after Stevie Bendel, shout out Stevie, hope you're all right, mate. Give me a ring. Uh, I think Stevie Bendel, after he beat Paul Smith, I, don't, I think Paul Smith started looking at weight as an issue, and I don't think that were a problem. If you get beat, you get beat, don't you? We all have bad nights at office. He should have stayed at that weight, but all of a sudden he decided to think they were a super middleweight. Now, I don't think he were a super middleweight, to be honest. And I think that Paul Smith were a middleweight, and I think when it, once he got beat, I think it were downhill from then on. He did well to end up with a British title against Tony Dodson, who were ranked really low. Paul Smith's best win, Tony Dodson. But yeah, he ended up fighting Groves, De Gale, Arthur Abraham twice, Zuga and Andre Ward. But yeah, his best win was Tony Dodson. And, he, and he's been in with six quality fighters, so he's had a lot of paydays and he's done all right for himself financially, but... I think Paul Smith's career can go down as coulda, woulda, shoulda, definitely. Uh, he doesn't help himself when anybody tries to give an opinion or wish him luck. He just loves to block people. He likes to be controversial. I think he does it for a bit of attention, to be honest. I think that's why he does it. But uh, I don't think he is uh, ever gonna. I don't think he was ever gonna do anything after Stevie Bando beat him. That's just my opinion. Uh, That may sound harsh, but may sound harsh, but it's true. But uh, what can you do? What can you do? Uh, this way, here. Yeah. But Paul Smith, he's on the list. Uh, Ryan Rhodes. Ryan Rhodes. Ryan Rhodes should have been a world champion. No ifs, no buts. Ryan Rhodes should have been a world champion. That's the bottom line. He should have been a world champion. And uh, I think Ryan Rhodes, when he was young, what he 16 fights, he fought for a world title against a, a, a massive middleweight. And I mean massive. Massive middleweight. And he, he should have. He should have uh, waited. I think he were rushed on back of the Nazi Mamin hype, but he should he should have done that. Come wrong way here. Come wrong way here. Uh, uh,
But yeah, uh, Ryan Rhodes for Otis Grant, what it is, summer. A massive, massive middleweight. And Ryan Rhodes were really a light middleweight, wasn't he? With a world class light mi mi middle. And he's got wins over former world champions. So. So, as far as I'm concerned, Ryan Rhodes should have been a world champion. Multiple world champion. Multiple. And he should have. Uh, had all the belts and been pound for pound at the weight. Uh, that's my opinion on Ryan Rhodes. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, definite. Massive Ryan Rhodes fan. I'm his, I'm, he's my second favourite fighter after Carl Froch. Uh, you know, he fought Jason Matthews at middleweight, nearly pulled it off, but like I said, he's a light, he's a light middleweight. And not a massive light middleweight. Multi -skill, multi skilled, switch hitter, mega skilled, didn't take punishments. Uh, I think he'd be a good trainer. Multi skilled, multi, multi skilled, honestly. Breathtaking skills. Youngest ever winner of a British title, Ryan Rhodes. Uh, so he's definitely on my list. Definitely, definitely. Liam Cameron. Liam Cameron, he's my pal, uh, ABH senior champion, he's won other national titles as well, uh, massive, massive at the weight at middleweight, massive, big puncher, uh, I'm out of Brocken that he got a four year ban, he's appealing it, and there should be some news on that in the next few weeks, but they're not coming back to Dennis if he uh, wins his appeal. There's got a change of circumstances in his appeal, so it looks like he could be could be all right. Uh, there's other people that have had 18 month bans for that, and Liam got four years. So hopefully he's going to be all right with that. Uh, it'd be a shame if he don't go back to Dennis, but he's still only 28, and he Liam. It's not in that world for him. And if he wins if he wins his appeal, I've heard that. It's going to be legal action against certain people, so this is, our, this is our friends and all that can fall out, isn't it? But let's not get away from the fact that Liam Cameron can fight, and, he's, and, he, and he had an experienced trainer with him nearly all the way through. Chris Smedley, the, you know, they, they, had, they had a break and then they got back together a couple of times, I think, but because he left and went to Ingalls and Clinton Woods, didn't he? Liam, but great fighter, Liam. Nobody can say he's not a great fighter. And good luck to Liam. Whatever he does, I will always back him. He's my pal. I'll always back Liam, but it's a bit awkward. I'm in the middle of it, aren't I, really? And I like him. I like Liam and I wish him all the best. He's one of my mates. I want him to do well. I don't want him to be at home putting weight on and be depressed and unhappy and all that. And and everybody to be having a go at him on social media saying, oh, I bet you're snorting your head off and all that, which isn't true. He's actually doing a bit of training now, so people need to get off his back. He's a good person, Liam. You know, you, you need to go out and be a fighter of your sense and understand what's involved. Um, I feel for him. I do I feel for him a lot? I really feel for Liam. I really do, but uh, Liam Cameron could have, would have, should have, definitely. He, he, he should have gone all the way. ABA champion, Frank Warren and Lot wanted to sign him, didn't they? Audley Harrison. Now, I'm going to defend Audley Harrison here. Audley Harrison won a gold medal at the Olympics and he fought for a world title and was a European champion. Now, people say he's a lot worse than David Price. David Price has been knocked out six times, more times than Audley, and he's never won anything above a British and Commonwealth. And he's not fought for a world title, and he's not won a European. So, how can people have a go at Audley Harrison? But you think, with being a gold medal Olympian, that Audley Harrison would go all the way, wouldn't you? You'd think he'd go all the way with right people around him, but in my opinion, where he made the mistake was. He didn't, he didn't play the ball, he didn't play the game, did he? He should have gone with Warren at the time, he was a big noise in England. 
He didn't play the game. If he'd have played the game, he'd have been all right. He'd, he'd have been all right if he'd have played the game, but he didn't. And uh, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for him, to be honest. I feel sorry for him. It's getting a bit cold, isn't it? I feel sorry for Audley Harrison, but if you don't play the game, that's it. With all them comebacks he did, when he, he was coming back just for money, wasn't he? Because he had a gambling problem, but he did all his money in. He had a pay-per-view fight in UK from nowhere, from winning prize fighter and, and a lucky punch against Michael Sprott. He got his centre world title shot. You can be down and out and come back, win prize fighter, beat Sprott, and then be fighting for an heavyweight title. How does that work? How can that work? So Audley Harrison, he'll go down as, for what he did as an amateur, gold medal Commonwealth, gold medal Olympics, he'll go down, and he, and he robbed me to home to Olympic medal, didn't he? He'll go down as a failure, won't it? Audley Harrison will go down as a failure. And it's a shame, really, because how can I say that? We, as somebody who served over 10 years in prison over a 12 and a half year period, how can I say Audley Harrison's a failure? I can't, can I? I can't because it's... He's done, more, he's done better than me, hasn't he? But I've probably got a few quid more than him, haven't I? Where it's got turned out for him, but... And I feel for Audley Harrison as well, and... I don't... I know he likes the line, like, but... What's he going to do? He said, now he can't fight. Is he going to be a trainer? He could be a, an advisor to fighters, couldn't he, for a promoter? I'm sure there's a role for him because he's a gold medal Olympian and a European champion. And that's all Henry Cooper was, a European champion, wasn't he? And he only fought for one world title, did he? So, and he didn't win a gold medal, Henry, did he? So, maybe we should give, cut Audley Harrison some slack. Because Henry Cooper got plenty of slack cut, didn't he? But then again, Henry Cooper dropped Ali, didn't he? Could you see Audley dropping Wilder or Joshua or Tyson Fury. No, I couldn't see it. So I kind of feel for Audley, but it's tough at the top, isn't it? It's tough at the top. Uh, Mark Tibbs, next on the list. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Mark Tibbs' career, 22 and 2. Uh, promising, very, very promising fighter. Very fit. Very good jab, good mover. Uh, Repton Boys Club, West Ham. His dad's Jimmy Tibbs, trainer. So when guys were fighting Mark Tibbs, they were gonna, you know, they were, they were gonna step up the game 25, maybe 30, 40 percent. I think that Mark Tibbs should have at least won British and European titles, at least. I've heard stories about him schooling guys who were, you know, at, at the top of the game. You know, so it's all about timing and that, but as but as somebody who's seen it now close up boxing for over four years now, I think that things can go on behind the scenes. One minute you're riding high, and next minute things can happen behind the scenes, and you're not. And I, I did speak to Jim, Jimmy Tibbs, Mark's dad, about Mark and that, and I think there were a few factors in why why he got a bit disheartened with sport. It can be a, one of many things. Also, you've got to remember the young lads, aren't they? And, you know, Mark, Mark Tibbs probably didn't need to be a boxer. He probably already had silk, silk pyjamas on when he started his career because his dad had gone out and put grafting and, you know, put his family in a good position. You know, he's an old school man, isn't he, Jimmy Tibbs? So, but Mark wanted to do it and probably wanted to follow his dad and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I just didn't want to follow my old man. He worked in that pit. That's not for Porky. I went other way, made bad choices, very bad choices, and uh, I ended up doing plenty of porridge. Although I've turned it, turned that in now, but uh, I don't put myself in that situation. But Mark Tibbs should have gone all way and should have won at least the British, Commonwealth, and European titles. Should have done that and gone on to fight for a world title. At that time, whether he would have won a world title at that weight. 
I don't know, but he should have at least British Commonwealth and European titles, so I think Mark will take that to his grave, but not in a bad way because he achieved a lot more than other fighters did. He had a great record there, 20 and 2 and 2, is it, or, and a draw, something like that. But got out of it a very, very young man. A very, very young man. Uh, a couple of others now. I was going to put Barry McGuigan in, and and uh, but I'm not going to because he did win a world title and he's in all the fame. So I just thought that he could have gone to be a, a real, real, real force. But I think it, his style kind of fizzled out, and that break he had from the game and the, the legal fight, he, legal issues, and that, and I think that spoiled it for Barry McGuigan. And of course, he won a world title, then he beat a pound for pound guy. So I can't put Barry McGuigan in, but he could have been like. A Ray Robinson type in that bracket, but he still ended up getting an Hall of Fame, didn't he? So I can't put Barry in, but I am going to put Georgie Collins in. Now he's probably the most talented boxer that y y you could ever ever wish to see. Uh, Georgie Collins is in my list. Uh, he just disappeared. He, he uh, I don't know. He, he, he just one day he just he just disappeared from boxing. I spoke to Bunsey about it at Dennis's dad's celebration of his life and I've heard Frank Warren come out with things about Georgie Collins that God, he was breathtaking, breathtaking. Ask anybody in boxing about Georgie Collins and I rave about him, me, you know, one of them ones who I look at it and I always think, oh God, what, what would have, what, whatever happened to him, Georgie Collins? You know, like you say, what happened to Mark Tibbs and you know, what, what happened to Errol Bomber Green? Well, Errol Bomber Green got his chance to fight for world titles, didn't he? And he didn't have no luck, but he was already there, a world-class fighter. But Georgie Collins, he... It were over, really, before it got started for him. A bit like with Mark Tibbs as well, but... Mark Tibbs will, will tell you himself that Georgie Collins were a special talent, and... Then it's like it's like them kids at school in it who you see who, who are breathtaking as 14 year olds at football and then you see them you see them and they, they never they never even went for a trial and stuff like that I were in junior school with kids who were like that and they never even played for a team in comprehensive and I was like God I couldn't believe it but Georgie Collins were just oh fucking hell and he, he, he's one of them coulda, woulda, shoulda guys and shoulda gone all the way and it bothers me that and, I, and, I, and I, I don't doubt that that when Mark Tibbs bothers him as well but getting on for the uh, the last one uh, we've got enough time in this, 23 minutes the last one and I'm not just saying this because I've met him and I like him and I get on with him I helped make a world title fight for Frankie Gavin He's my last one. I said, Frankie, would you like to fight for IBO World Title at Welterweight? He said, yes, please. That should have been last March, uh, 14 months ago. The fight fell through with a few, with a few weeks ago. And uh, I were broken hearted. Broken hearted. But that were all off my doing that. Sending the emails to Ed Levine at the IBO and working behind the scenes and having Frankie up for meetings and stuff like that. Frankie Gavin, there's loads more than these guys I've mentioned today, but Frankie Gavin, British and Commonwealth champion, fought for European against Bundo, got beat, fought again against that other guy, the Spanish kid, got beat, didn't he? And he fought Kel Brook in a pay-per-view fight and got beat, but he wasn't big enough to fight Kel. Frankie Gavin needed a dietitian and a bit of dedication. Fun time Frankie, because they call him, because he likes a party, doesn't he? But multi multi skill that's Steffi Bull about when he's Steffi how are you doing Steffi tell everybody on your on your Twitter about when you sparred Frankie Gavin what happened respect for getting in there but we all know what happened don't we Frankie Gavin for me is like God he could have ruled World Amateur Gold at Chicago 2007. Frankie Gavin and Billy Joe Saunders have skills to burn. Off the charts. Dennis wanted to sign them both. Off the charts. Skills. Off the charts. Just. I watched a few Frankie Gavin fights and Billy Joe Saunders fights with Den. 
back at Den's house one night with a few beers after we'd been around Sheffield and Den's like, they're off at charts aren't they, the skills, are just mesmerising skills and Terry will be watching this, Terry Chap, chap from uh, New Age Pod and he'll be like, oh you've not still got that Frankie Gavin thing going on in your head Porky, have you? Or, or them at Steffi Bulls will be going on about it, oh he's not going on about Frankie Gavin. I go on about Frankie Gavin like I do Ryan Rhodes because... Ryan Rhodes were more bad luck and fighting in the wrong weight division. The dedication were there, but fighting at the wrong weight. If you're a boxer, you've got to get your weight right, haven't you? Frankie fighting at wrong weight. Who's that driving fast around here? Fighting at the wrong weight. You've got to get that right, and you've got to get the right fights at the right time. I think Ryan Rhodes fought at the wrong time in world title fights at the wrong time and at the wrong weight and when he did, when he did get a world title fight at light middleweight <laughs> it was Canelo and it were he maybe thought he were getting Canelo at the right time before he peaked but Ryan had gone by his peak but could you imagine them at the peak Canelo at his peak and Ryan Rhodes at his peak at light middleweight back in the day that's a pick and fight, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Bearing in mind we're talking light middle here, not middle, light middle, and Ryan at his peak from that era. That's a fantastic pick and fight. That's a pick and fight. Same as all them people who scoffed at me when I did that Josh Taylor video, you know a year ago, when I said Josh Taylor beats Mikey Garcia. Go look at that video I did on my channel. Everybody scoffed, didn't they, and took piss out of me. Well, they're not taking piss out of me now, are they? 11 months later, he's a world chat. July the 2nd, that video went out last year. 11 months later, Josh Whale, or 10 months later, he's a world champion. Josh Taylor, sorry. He's a world champion, and he beats Mikey Garcia now. So you're not scoffing now, are you, all you people who hammered me? So, but the, the list, this is the, li this is the list. So I'm going to go get me dinner now. This is the list. Number 10, Scott Cardle, Mark Macklin, Marcus Morrison, Ryan Rhodes. Uh, I forgot who I had for number 6. Uh, Liam Cameron, Aud Audley Harrison, Mark Tibbs, Georgie Collin, Frankie Gavin. Uh, yeah, I didn't put Pelly Reed in, did I? I changed the Pelly Reed one. But, uh, but yeah, uh, it is what it is, isn't it? So, anyway, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. So, bump.